there everyone, welcome back to the Volblom Knitting Podcast. My name is Lisa. So it's September now and it's starting to get hot here. So not doing any knitting today, just a little scarf. But yeah, I hope everyone's always doing well. And in the Northern Hemisphere, I hope you have a wonderful fall so far. And here in the Southern Hemisphere, I hope everyone is enjoying the warmer temperatures. Okay, let's begin. So, first things first, I'm wearing two completed objects. So, this is the Sophie scarf from Petite Knit, and I used African Expressions Joy. Um, I had some leftover yarn, so I made the scarf. I could make the bigger one. So, it's a very thin, long scarf that you can tie around your neck. I'm just tying it like this, otherwise it's too hot around my neck. And then I'm also wearing a sewn dress. So this is the Senna dress from Schultz Apparel. I think I'm saying that correctly. And I used a um, linen fabric. I'm not sure if it's a linen and cotton blend or just linen, but I think it's a I think it's a um, a blend. But it has this beautiful print on it. And the colours are hopefully it can pick up the correct colours. It's more muted than very bright colours, so it's more gold yellow and a sage green and a mauve pink but yeah so this dress it is actually a more wider dress it has a tie at the back so it's it fits more like this and you have a tie where you can cinch in the waist like that um, and then just a very plain fitted bodice some darts, bust darts here on the sides, and then the back is open here with a tie at the back neck, and then knife pleats um, in the skirt. And the print is a bit difficult to see, but the skirt does go a bit up and then down here. So, yeah, it's a very flattering dress. And you can tie it as tightly as you want to or not. It's a very easy project. So if anyone wants to make a dress, there's, it's a very easy dress to make. So, so it's the Senna dress from Schultz Apparel. Okay. Um, let's begin or go on with um, other finished objects. So I did finish the Berry Trifle Cowl from Life is Cozy, Ksenia. Hopefully you can see textures. So, so this was a test net for Life is Cozy. I didn't complete it on time, but I did complete it recently. So the yarn I used is um, Rowan Felt a Tweet. And um, I'll put the number of the color on screen. So it's a cowl with some increases in the center front. And you can see the, how the increases look there. With some layers of texture, stockinate, um, seed stitch. I think she calls this the berry, blackberry stitch or blueberry stitch. And then like a, a type of ruffle with some nubs. There. So yeah, I finished this just in time for warmer weather. So I'm going to enjoy this next year during the fall season. So, so the berry trifle cowl from Ksenia or Life is Cozy. Um, so next is socks. So I did a knit or participate in a knit along, the summer sock knit along, posted by Sorry North. It. and the knit along is done now it ended on the 31st of August so um, these socks I have shown before 
This one is the Rosalind Socks. I used African Expression Sole for this one. This one is the Ariel Socks. I used Belly Horror Fibers. That skein was gifted to me by a viewer. And then this is the Peregrine Socks. It's also African Expression Sole. And then the last sock. I think I showed one of this pair before. This is the Storsen sock and I used the previous three yarns to create this sock. So, yeah. so it's the four pairs of sock in this collection. Let me hold it up like this. Yeah. I really am happy with these pairs of socks. Um, I haven't worn them before yet because I wanted to show them before I wear them. Now I can wear them and enjoy them and I'm very happy with this um, project. So yeah, it was fun. I can't wait for the next next year's until yeah next year. <laughs> and it was a very yeah it's some different techniques. A lot of the, the two were toes up to a cuff down and with the peregrine socks I enjoyed this cuff a lot it's two by two ribbing and this one was knitted toe up and I enjoyed toe up more because I can fit it more easily on my foot when I knit it cuff down is a bit more difficult for me to fit but yeah I enjoyed it and I'm very happy with this project and the patterns are by Sari Nordland and I will also put the names of the socks up on screen. <laughs> okay, so those are my finished objects. I'm going to go into whips now. First whip is my Stryer cardigan and I'm very happy with my progress. As you may see, the body is done and one sleeve is done. So, but I have a lot of ends to even. So when I do the button band, I'm going to work the threads in the, yeah, I'm going to catch the thread in so that I don't have to sew everything by hand. I did add the, some stitch markers along the edge so long um, to indicate how much stitches I need to pick up for the button band every section to evenly pick up stitches. So, so this is the Stryer cardigan from Andrea Maori and I'm using African Expression Saw. I'll put the colorway names or numbers on screen. But yeah, the squish is so lovely. I'm so happy with it. I'll put it on so you can see how it's looking. So it's just one sleeve left and the button band. So that's how it's looking. Mm, I'm so happy. So, so there is a, a brownish color stripe there, a lilac purple, a green, and then a gray. So that maybe there you can see the colors better there but yeah so it's whole fisherman's rib texture and it's going a lot better i did start the sleeve using a nine inch circular needle but it didn't it was a it was a bit cumbersome so i switched over to a uh, magic loop and i enjoy magic loop a lot better for knitting sleeves. I, I don't get the laddering effect, so I'm fine using Magic Loop. But yeah, I'm so happy with it. I'm almost done. Can't wait to wear it. And the squish. If you like squishy garments, try um, using the fisherman's texture 
or brioche stitch. So yeah. But I do believe I'm not going to make a brioche or a fisherman's rib garment anytime soon again because this is really time consuming and especially using a fingering weight yarn, it's very time consuming. But that's that. Um, I did make some progress on my Kyla shawl from Isabel Kramer. Dum, dum, dum. Like two inches progress. <laughs> but that's better than nothing. So, yeah, so this is the Kyla shawl from Isabel Kramer. I'm using John Owen Textiles a Pack of Delight in the white colorway. And I have a little friend just outside the window singing to us. But yeah. So, yeah, I, this one, the patch is also very easy and it's not that much stitches on the needle. So it's not taking that long, but it's just, I don't enjoy knitting shawls, I think. With, and also saying that, I think I'm going to participate in the Stephen Waste Knit Along again this year. I'm just going to choose fingering weight yarn this time and not DK weight again but that's okay um so those are my two whips um yeah okay I'm going to quickly switch over to my sewing project quickly switch over to my sewing projects and um, some of the um the, some of the projects I have completed this month um, I did show some of them on my Instagram as well. But I'm just going to talk through them quickly. So this one first. It's a linen skirt. So it's already um, get easily creased. It, it, get, it has creases already. But yeah. So this is a linen skirt. But it is a twill weave. So it's a bit more drapier than just the plain weave linen and um, so I drafted this pattern myself it's just like a rectangle for the back for the and two for the front and then pocket patterns and then the waistband so it's um, straightforward uh, some gathers at the waist and buttons in the center front I did add two buttons at the waistband just for extra security and then pockets in the side seams so, yeah. so this is a very um, comfortable skirt and it yeah I'm enjoying it I do think I added too much gathers to the waist so it's a bit like a cupcake type of thing but yeah I enjoy it I don't mind if anyone has a problem with it I don't care but yeah okay next um, sewing project this one I also shared on my Instagram so this is the Leslie skirt from wearing history so this is a vintage pattern that the seller just updated the pattern and yeah so I made this one this is cotton twill fabric it's yeah the color is accurate on screen it's a bit more faded in person but yeah so it has a like a heart shape waist waist it's not entirely a waistband Back is a, has a waistband, but it's, um, yeah, waist support, I don't know. Okay, um, and then just gathers here at the hip area. And then the back skirt is um, smooth, so it's a flared skirt at the back. Then the buttons is bound buttons um, with the same fabric and the button holes is bound button holes. So the buttons are made by hand and it's not the neatest. <laughs> not the neatest. But this 
fabric is also um, a bit thick, so my machine wouldn't have liked it if I put it and made some buttonholes on it. But yeah, I like this skirt as well. I will add some of the videos on screen of me wearing it um, that are also added on Instagram. But yeah, there's a lot of hand sewing involved as well with the bound button buttonholes and then I personally love a hand sewn um, hem because you can't see the stitching from the front but yeah this was a cute nice project it's a bit more advanced I would say next one is my penny dress from I think it's seamwork I can be mistaken. I bought it on Singer, but I think it's a the, the pattern is designed by someone else. But yeah, I'll put everything on screen. So this is the penny dress. So the fabric is a cotton fabric with some embroidery on it and sequins. Maybe you can see the sequin reflecting over there. Um, so it's a shirt dress with buttons, a very plain collar, um, flared skirt as well and then I really love the belt detail just to add something um, to the dress as well but what's really beautiful for me is the buttons I chose for this one. So it's shank buttons with some floral detail in the middle, but it's like a cutout. So you can maybe see my nails underneath that. So it's just gorgeous buttons. And the fabric is also gorgeous. So the penny dress. And I like color details but I really struggle sewing colors and this dress I really enjoyed sewing the color and it looks perfect in my opinion so <laughs> it cannot it's not the perfect most perfect color but I'm happy with my result okay last sewing finished object is a jacket so this fabric I saw I think it was Arthur Bales and it's a tapestry like fabric maybe it's more used for upholstery I can be wrong it has that smell but I think it's just maybe it just got, get, got some dust but yeah okay and I made a biker jacket type of thing so yeah so um, I can't remember the pattern number, but it's a batteric pattern I used, and it is a lined biker jacket with some, and it's a two piece sleeve. Um, what else? Yeah, I'll put it on to show. Hopefully, I won't die. In this heat. So I'm just going to take off my scarf. So this is how it looks when it's open. So it has a little color there and I added a metal zip so it's a open end zip and you just close it like that and there you have a jacket. And you can also close it completely to the top and then I, I made the pattern or laid out the pattern so that this the fabrics pattern is in, is in the center but yeah that's how it looks I feel very formal wearing this but yeah, that's how it looks And can wear it open like that. 
So those are my finished objects sewn wise. Um, yes. <laughs> I'm going to talk about my yarn acquisitions now. So in the month of August, Arthur Bales had a sale. So I did get some yarn there. This is Rowan Norwegian wool. So I got this grey colour. This one is 016. And then this one is 010. So this is like a soft cloud grey. And this is more like a slate grey. The other, sorry, the other colors in this yarn was a bit too bright for me. So I chose these colors, so just the two colors. But enough to make like a um, color work cardigan. But I don't know what cardigan you need to make. I was wondering if I should make the Maya cardigan in just these two colors. I don't know, but um, I want to try sticking with these yarns. So I think maybe the Maya cardigan. I will see maybe maybe I find another cardigan pattern with colour work, two colours and sneaking. But yeah. Okay. The Rowan Norwegian wool. And then oh also at the sale I got these buttons. I really love buttons. Um, there you go. So I think it's a wood, wooden button. It's a shank button, so it has the shank at the back, but it has like a texture, floral leaf texture on top. Um, I think. It showed there, but yeah, it's this is so gorgeous. I couldn't leave it behind. It was a bit more on the pricier side, but buttons, buttons are very special to me. <laughs> um, I got other yarns, so I saw this cardigan on um, Ravelry. It's a flatter cardigan from Kate Oates. I'm not sure it's Katie Oates or Kate Oates, um, but I'll put it on screen. And it's a two color cardigan with a chevron texture. And she used, um, I'm not sure what yarn she used, I think it's um, Le Biche Bush, something like that. But the one was more um, fluffier and the other one was more slub yarn. So it created a beautiful texture. But I didn't know where. To get like a variegated um, slab yarn like that. There is um, African Expressions Curiosity but I wasn't very keen on dyeing it myself but yeah. <laughs> um, so I got this yarns. So it's Drop Sky Mix. This one is 03 and 14. And I got it from the wool warehouse in the UK. So it wasn't that expensive, relatively. Um, other things have cost more, but these yarns are gorgeous and they're very soft. So it's a chain knit construction 74% um, alpaca, 18% polyamide, 8% wool. So this one's also a soft grey, but it's not a, um, a what's the word? Oh, not a pale color, but there's some little mix mixtures of darker and lighter greys. And then this one is purple or some pink. Um, there's a slight yellow in it as well, gold. But yeah. So the plan is to make the flatter cardigan with these yarns and to use these buttons 
Okay, the buttons are a bit dark, but they're too they're too gorgeous not to use them. There. Yeah. So those are my yarn acquisitions. This month and yeah. I think that is my those stuff. So I want to do my next projects again. So after I'm gonna choose a summer um, object, summer top, and then as as a cardigan as well because sweaters it's too warm it's too warm to wear sweaters now, but I can still make and wear cardigans now. So after I completed the straw cardigan, I'm going to make the next cardigan, but um, I'm going to choose a summer top to start knitting on as well. So, um, and maybe a accessory, but some of the accessories are cowls and like beanies or hats. I have berets in there as well. But I'm going to choose a summer cardigan, a um, garment, summer card, summer garment, a cardigan, and an accessory. So let's start with accessories. So my girls' jars. Oh dear. Okay, have one. Okay, a beret. So this is the Dahlia beret from Sorry Nordland. I like that. So let me get the yarns I'm going to use for this quickly. Okay. So the Dahlia beret is a brioche beret with two colors. And I'm going to use these colors. So this is John Arbum Apaca Delight, the same one that I'm using for the color shawl. I think I'm not going to use, I got three skeins. So I'm not going to use all three skeins for the shawl, I'm just going to use the two. And then the other bit, or this one for the um, beret. And if there's left over from the beret, I can put it in the shawl if I need to. And then this, is Miss La Mort. I think it was Lofty Plight and the colorway is Abalone. So I did use these, this yarn for the mittens I made earlier this year. I can't remember the name, but yeah, I put it, the name of the mittens up on screen. But yeah, I have this left over, so I'm going to use these two yarns for that. I think it's going to look cute. But yeah. So, a beret. So that's good. So it's not too um, warm. Sorry about that. I know the lighting is a bit off right now. I had to free up some space in my SIM card. But I want to finish this podcast now. So I'm going to choose my summer project cardigan and recommend some podcasters. So I'm going to wrap this up quickly. So summer projects. First up oops, is the Kuta top by Sorry Nordland. So this one is also a recently published pattern by Sorry Nordland. And I'm gonna use Naughty Habit. This is her two plot fingering. 83%, 83.3% merino, 60.7% linen. So it's a very soft pink and the colorway name is Sabal. Yeah, Sabal. So I'm gonna use that for the top. And then okay, cardigans. Oops. Yay! The flatter cardigan from Kate Oates. So that's good. I have the yarn for that. Um, so yeah, and I did show those yarns earlier, so it's the Drops Sky Mix. So yeah, those are my new sewing projects. And I'm also going to work on the socks, the Caramel Kiss socks and the Lume socks. Um, September, October and November. And then from December I'm going to choose other projects. So yeah, some other podcasters I want to recommend. So I have four 
knitting podcast and two sewing related YouTubers. So the first one is Michelle from the Hitch Witch Knit podcast, Sophie from the Knit Pro Girl, Ali from the Promegranate Girl, and Casey from Young Folk Knits. And then Kat from Kat's Costumeries. She is a her historic, she sews historical costumes, but I really love her aesthetic and she's very fun to watch. And then Sarah from Sarah Naomi. She's started YouTubing recently and her Instagram has always been very inspirational for me. So yeah, those are some podcasters and other YouTubers I would recommend. And yeah, I hope everyone has a wonderful September. And yeah, I hope you enjoy this. Please like and subscribe if you want to. I would very much appreciate it. Yeah. Have a wonderful September and I'll see you in October. Bye-bye.